Recently, after covering many rendering techniques and rendering engines on the channel, I noticed how not all things are created equal. For instance, some engines prioritize photorealism with complex light simulations and detailed textures such as octane and cycles, while others might focus on speed and efficiency, sacrificing some visual fidelity for faster results such as redshift. So, the question now is, what are the different types of render engines, and what is the difference between them? In the field of computer graphics, render engines can be generally categorized into two main flavors, or categories if you will, which are biased and unbiased, with each bringing its own strength and characteristics to the table like two sides of the same coin. And this brings two contrasting philosophies of speed versus realism, which you can't escape because you hear a lot about it online. On one side, we've got biased render engines. And yeah, the name kind of says it all. It is designed to favor certain light sources and techniques over others to speed up the rendering process, while still trying to achieve visually attractive results. You see, it prioritizes speed and results that look really good, instead of worrying too much about accuracy and realism, even if it means bending the rules of reality even a little bit. On the other side, unbiased rendering puts itself on a high horse by prioritizing total physically accurate and realistic results over anything else. Sure, this might take longer, but the goal is to produce results that are true to reality and as accurate as possible by not favoring any light source over the other, and by strictly following the laws of physics, even if it means sacrificing speed for the sake of it. And if you read between the lines, unbiased rendering is a collection of methods that aim to produce images as close and true to physical simulations of light as possible, without introducing any errors or approximations. It starts the process with a noisy image, then the algorithm simulates light interactions and decreases the noise as the algorithm gets closer and closer to a more accurate image. And I am sure you have seen this before. This means that given enough time, the more samples you add, the more realistic the image is gonna be, at least in theory. Then the engine will generate images with a perfect representation of light interactions in the scene, or almost, let's just say. And the more samples you add, the more accurate the results will be. Generally speaking, unbiased rendering is a broad category of techniques, which describes any rendering method that doesn't introduce systematic bias, such as path tracing, bidirectional path tracing, and metropolis light transport, as it is one of the most popular genres in the market, with software such as Cycles, Arnold, and Octane. Path tracing is arguably the most advanced rendering method when it comes to photorealism as it tries to mimic how light functions in the real world, by capturing how it reflects and behaves on surfaces from every direction imaginable and tracing hundreds or even thousands of rays, if not even more, through the same pixel. So what this method does is it tries to copy and determine the amount and quality of light projected towards the viewer of every pixel in the image, and then produces one that is as faithful to reality as possible. Keep in mind that this is just a simple overview, because it is much more complex than that. As I mentioned before, bias engines are the polar opposite and they are more interested in producing fast results by just providing an approximation and a rough idea of photorealism instead of the authentic version. For example, ambient occlusion can simulate soft shadows that naturally occur when indirect or ambient lighting is cast onto the scene. Or screen space reflections where image data of the rendered scene is reused to calculate reflections. Long story short, it takes objects on the screen and it copies them for quick reflections, but at the same time, it can miss objects outside of the screen or cause inaccuracies to say the least. Now, some might say it is just the economical version of unbiased, and I can see where this is coming from. However, it is far from being the truth. While biased engines will lose in a purely photorealistic contest, they let you think outside of the box. 
since you are not tied down by the strict physical rules. In other words, you can edit and customize the photorealistic renders, which gives you flexibility in what this scene should look like, even though it might not be as accurate or as realistic as the unbiased version. For instance, you can adjust shadow softness, color, and intensity, as well as applying post-processing effects like lens distortions, bloom, and chromatic aberration directly within the render engine. Besides, they tend to offer a wide range of special effects and stylized looks. After all, it is the opposite of photorealism. Bias engines typically use ray tracing to sell the illusion of photorealism, a method of rendering that simulates the physical behavior of light as well as accurate reflections, refractions, shadows, or even indirect lighting. The difference is that the traditional ray tracing calculates the exact path of reflection and refraction of each light ray, and traces them all the way back to one or more light sources, which can be further enhanced with more modern techniques such as global illumination or dynamic illumination. On the other hand, path tracing generates multiple rays per pixel, which are bounced in random directions, resulting in a more realistic depiction of light. Ray tracing typically uses methods like radiance caching or photo mapping to approximately calculate indirect lighting and reflections, which aim to reduce computational costs and at the same time, they are less accurate than full path tracing as I mentioned before. But it can produce visually acceptable results nonetheless, and it can do that quickly. On a side note, I would like to mention that today's rendering field is very diverse, and it is getting harder each day to classify engines as one size fit all kind of deal, so it can get very confusing. Path tracing doesn't always necessarily mean an unbiased engine, and vice versa. For example, Redshift is a biased render engine that uses path tracing rendering methods, and then there are some engines that are path tracers with some ray tracing capabilities or unbiased techniques with some bias, and then the list goes on. So it is important to take this into consideration, and the analysis of this video is just a general overview, so keep that in mind. There is also real-time rendering, and it is exactly what it sounds like. 3D animations that are rendered so quickly that they appear to be generated in absolute real-time. In other words, it is any rendering method that is optimized and so quick to the point where it happens almost instantaneously, and it gives the users the ability to interact with the scene and reflect all the user's actions in real time. And if I asked you where do you see this real-time rendering often used, you would probably say video games. And hey, fair enough, because the gaming industry has been implementing real-time rendering for decades. However, in recent years, many fields started to use this type of rendering, because we can see it being used in filmmaking, architecture, in addition to virtual and augmented realities. To see how everything works beneath the surface, First, it is important to break down how it functions with what we call the pipeline, which consists of three conceptual stages, the application stage, the geometry stage, and the final one we'll talk about later. The application stage is the part where you as an artist get to call the shots. This is where you have control over the 3D models and their properties and how they are defined, such as setting up the scene, applying the textures, as well as anything related to lighting, camera settings, and more. Then there is the geometry stage, where the 3D models are transformed from their original 3D space into 2D space, using techniques such as projection and clipping. I know this might seem a bit confusing now, but it will come into place once we talk about the final stage. And when it comes to this stage, which is producing the final images, real-time rendering traditionally relies on real-time rasterization, a technique that is fast enough to be used in real-time projects for decades. Essentially, it is a process of converting the 3D models into pixels, which show up on the 2D screen. As a general theory, it determines which pixels are converted by the 3D models and then assigned color values to choose pixels based on lighting and texture information. However, as they say, the only constant in life is change. And for a few years now, the landscape of real-time rendering changed a lot, 
especially with the introduction of real-time ray tracing, with the emergence of platforms such as the NVIDIA RTX platform, Microsoft DirectX ray tracing, among many others. So, real-time ray tracing became possible, and it works similarly to regular ray tracing, except that, you know, it is in real time. And this gave this type of rendering a never-seen-before level of quality, and it started to become even popular across many sectors, thanks to engines such as Unreal and D5, since they offer an excellent level of photorealism with incredible speed. And they achieved this with the introduction of many new concepts, I mean in real-time rendering, such as screen space techniques, something that real-time rendering historically struggled with. And there you have it guys, I hope you found this video useful and informative, if you did, please give it a thumbs up, also please subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.